What is Nintendo doing with their secret NSO playtest? They've done some unexpected things lately, and don't even get me started on Alarmo. But this NSO playtest could lead to the most ambitious undertaking that no one's ever done before. And with its timing, could it somehow be related to the Switch 2? Nintendo unexpectedly announced on October 9th that they'll have open slots available for Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack members to sign up for a brand new NSO playtest program on October 10th. Slots were limited to just 10,000 participants outside of Japan and a raffle for participants in Nintendo HQ's neck of the woods. The recruitment period would have lasted for just five days if the 10,000 slots weren't taken yet. But within five seconds of the floodgates being opened, 10,000 of the luckiest players ever got selected. And not me. Oh, man. So what did these lucky participants sign up for? There have been many theories. It could be a platform for people to test multiplayer voice chat features on. But this doesn't sound as likely since the Switch doesn't have a microphone and you would need to rely on third-party Bluetooth headsets to get this to work with the current console. Some have speculated that this could be a way to test playing games through a dedicated server Nintendo would host so multiplayer games would not be so dependent on the player with the worst network lag as it is right now. It is possible, but you wouldn't need 10,000 players to test this and its timing wouldn't make much sense either. Now, where GameCube would be the next console for NSO to add, others have speculated that these 10,000 volunteers could get a first glimpse into playing GameCube games on the Switch. This very well could be the case since we know that there will be a 2.2 gigabyte download for this playtest and a few GameCube games could be added to it for play if Nintendo takes the unnecessary placeholder data off of these games to reduce them from their usual 1.5 gigabyte file size that they were usually shipped with on their original cartridges. And though this would be amazing, and we are expecting Nintendo to add the GameCube to NSO soon, I don't think they need people to test it on the Switch like they are in this setting. They didn't have a playtest for any of the other consoles through NSO. They just released those console emulators and games as they became available. So what could this playtest really be about? As far as what else this playtest could be, Russell Speck found something interesting and posted about it on X with the following. Found this line of text in a page source. We recommend enjoying this playtest using TV mode and a wired internet connection. Recommending wired makes me think bandwidth latency is important, which then makes wonder if it might be a game streaming service. Could this be a game streaming service? Now, if you want to find this message in the source code itself, you'll find it in a JavaScript file connected to the source that I have in a link below in the description. Game streaming services have been found with PlayStation, Xbox, Google Stradia, and on Live, but not yet with Nintendo. What would Nintendo do with a game streaming service? Now, games for the GameCube and newer Nintendo consoles are significantly larger in size than the classic consoles already on NSO of NES, SNES, and N64, to name a few. And if we are to enjoy a library of games from more modern systems before the Switch on NSO, then we would need to either have a much larger storage capacity or a game streaming service that doesn't require games to be downloaded on the device to play. And a game streaming service would solve this problem. It would also allow a potential feature of having a membership where we can play other Switch games we haven't purchased through a game streaming membership service like this. One argument to this being a reason for the playtest is that the large 2.2 gigabyte application the playtest will use is much larger than a game streaming service would need to be. So again, what is this playtest really for? If you like what you're hearing and want to keep getting more Nintendo Switch and Switch 2 news, click the like and subscribe buttons so you won't miss out on anything. Now, there have been many theories, but one, though as far-fetched as it may sound, could actually be the one that makes the most sense. And that one is how it relates to the Switch 2. 
Nintendo knows that historically, anytime they make a successor console, unless it has a major innovation, they sell less consoles than they did with the previous model. The Switch isn't listed here, though it's done very well with almost 150 million unit sales now. But you can see the point that every home console after the original NES sold less than the previous console till Nintendo had a revolutionary idea with the Wii through the motion controls they had. And how the Game Boy and DS were revolutionary with what they brought compared to the systems that came before. Just like the Switch was revolutionary and far superior than its terrible pre- predecessor found in the Wii U. But because of this downward trend, no matter how good the Switch 2 is, since it's not necessarily a revolutionary jump from the Switch, Nintendo knows that it probably won't topple the sales the original Switch had. The Switch is a powerhouse with success that can't be replicated unless a major revolutionary technology comes that's a first of its kind. But what if Nintendo could already bring a Switch 2 to you right now? What if Nintendo could bring Switch 2 games to the Switch console you already have? And what if this playtest was actually a way to test the process where you can buy and play Switch 2 games on your original Switch through the awesome magic of streaming? This would give you the benefits of playing games that were originally meant for better hardware to be played on your Switch console through a slight downgrade to the graphics and performance. And it would also explain the large file size of 2.2 gigabytes for a streaming platform if it also used AI conversion software to make these Switch 2 games compatible with the Nintendo Switch. This software might allow these Switch 2 games to be played real-time where some small core and cache data could be stored locally in the application to make the game streaming service more reliable with there being less content that needs to be downloaded at a time. It would be crazy, and no one's ever done this before, essentially providing forwards compatibility to give you the chance to play a successor console's games on a predecessor console. But with all the crazy things Nintendo has done, I could see them doing this. Of course, they'll still sell Switch 2, and the games would run with better graphics and performance on it. But a downgraded Switch 2 game on the Switch would still be amazing for those who don't want to make the jump and who may never make the jump to the newer console. What's also amazing about this is even though Nintendo knows that there would be less gamers buying the Switch 2 than those who already have a Switch, they would be able to sell their Switch 2 games to their current platform base of 150 plus million Switch users instead of starting from zero on their new console that won't nearly get as many cells. It is a stretch for this to happen because no one's ever done it. But Nintendo has done many things no one has done before. It would be a game changer no other gaming company could compete with yet. It would allow Nintendo to keep making more sales and a reason why people should still buy the Switch right now if it will also be able to play Switch 2 games. Now, there are still some problems with this. Not everyone has access to a good online connection, which makes taking the console anywhere you want not feasible when you need to rely on a stable internet link for continuous online game streaming. You also won't be able to rely on specific hardware features that the Switch 2 will have that the Switch 1 does not have, like a potential scroll wheel and a rumored camera, for instance. It is possible that these additional features aren't real game changers, and most or all games could be played without them. And it's also possible that the Switch 2 controllers could be used on the Switch 1 with an update to its firmware. Of course, this is all speculation, but it's fun to think about. Now, I know many of you are thinking, doesn't Nintendo want to sell Switch 2s? Doesn't this act as a disincentive to purchase the new hardware? It very well might, but it could actually help Nintendo sales of the Switch 2. The reason for this is if someone is enjoying a Switch 2 game on the Switch, but there's some lag, they don't get 4K graphics, and the user can only play it in docked mode because they need a stable internet connection for stream playing, 
They might want to play the same game on better hardware so they won't have to deal with those other headaches. In a way, it's like playing a comprehensive demo of a game without playing the full enhanced version of it. Many people will get hooked on a game and then decide they now have a reason to get the better system so they can play the same game but in the more enjoyable way it was intended to be played in. In a way, this would allow the Switch to be a Trojan horse to the Switch 2, where people can build up their library of Switch 2 games before they have the funds to buy a Switch 2. Then when they're ready, they can roll over all of their games to the Switch 2. In this way, Nintendo wouldn't be shutting anyone down from buying newer Switch 2 games, but would be opening up the possibility to have more loyal customers, which could potentially get more people to want to buy the Switch 2 at some later period of time who otherwise wouldn't have. Also, Nintendo may have a higher profit margin with selling more Switch consoles than the Switch 2 because it might cost so much less to make than the Switch 2 would be, and this is a win-win for Nintendo and for those who want to get a lower-costed system for now. This could be a new way for Nintendo to give users a gradual rollover to the new hardware instead of a harsh cutoff that's proven to not be as profitable in the past. Now timing is everything with Nintendo, and it's also what makes the timing of this playtest so bizarre. Why would Nintendo need to keep the exact nature of this playtest a secret? And why would they not allow this playtest app to be downloaded till October 20th? What's so special about this date, especially with it being a Sunday when Nintendo doesn't do anything on the weekend? Well, it's actually the eight year anniversary of when Nintendo revealed the Switch One. The day before, on October 19, 2016, Nintendo tweeted this announcement about how they'll show the NX reveal trailer the next day on October 20th. NX was Nintendo's code word for the Switch. Is there a correlation between the Switch reveal on October 20th, eight years ago, and the Switch 2 reveal this year? I would think so. And why does the playtest run from October 23rd through November 5th? November 5th is lined up right when Nintendo is having their investors call, and October 23rd is a Wednesday. This would give Nintendo time to reveal the Switch 2 in the day or two before the playtest would begin. So if word came out that the playtest was in relation to the Switch 2, nothing new would be leaked since people would already know about the Switch 2 from the reveal that would have already happened. Now, I'm not saying that the Switch 2 reveal will definitely happen either on October 21st or October 22nd, but it very well could because the timing of this unique playtest is very fishy. Do you think it's a good idea for Nintendo to stream Switch 2 games on the Switch 1? Or do you think this playtest is not related to the Switch 2 in any way? And I know we're beating a dead horse into the ground by now with these rumors, but do you think that the timing of this playtest is suggesting that the Switch 2 reveal will happen next week? Let me know your thoughts and what you think this playtest might be. What do you think about this playtest and the Switch 2's reveal? If you're looking for more information on the Switch 2, you'll want to watch this video here. 